Hi there, my name's John Maybe, and welcome to Hippo Shorts. In this segment, we're gonna talk about premature rupture of membranes. Let's take a look at this slide. So premature rupture of membranes occurs one or more hour before the onset of labor at term. So what do we mean by that? 37 weeks of gestation or greater. We also have a condition called preterm premature rupture of membranes that occurs less than 37 weeks of gestation. So with uh, premature rupture of membranes, the main complications are these, an increased risk of infection, that can include chorioamnionitis, neonatal sepsis, we can have abnormal fetal presentation, an increased risk of neonatal intraventricular hemorrhage, or a rupture placenta. So what are the signs that uh, patients are going to have? They're going to feel a gush or leakage of fluid from the vagina. So how do we make the diagnosis? Well, the diagnosis is made clinically, typically, but there is a key pearl that you want to be aware of. You want to make sure that we avoid performing a digital cervical exam. The problem is this is associated with increases in latent period and an increase in infant morbidity and mortality. So instead, we want to do a sterile speculum exam. What we're looking for is vaginal pooling of amniotic fluid, a cervical os demonstrating leaking fluid, or maybe vernix or meconium. There are some additional tests that we can do. So these can be performed on an amniotic fluid sample that's obtained with a sterile swab. So we can place uh, some of that fluid on a microscope slide and look for ferning, which is shown in this diagram, pointed to by those green arrows there. We can also place a sample of the fluid on some nitrazine paper, and we're looking for a color change from yellow to blue. That's a positive test, which indicates that the pH is greater than 6.5 or that we have an alkaline fluid sample. All right, that wraps it up for this segment. For more information on this or other topics, come on down to hippoeducation.com. We'll see you next time.